Hi, it's Bridget. Hey, welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today, we're going to have a conversation with Betty White. Betty White actually has another video here on the playlist at Above Life Channel, so check that out. We did channel her very early on this year. So today, I thought it would be a good idea to talk to a comedian and also someone who has very strong opinions and viewpoints regarding women. Given the current events in the United States of America, I think uh, this is a good way for me to be able to really feel into and galvanize some of that support that some of the women perhaps might be needing and feeling right now that need to really rally and what that looks like. Okay, so we're going to have a conversation with Betty White. Betty, can you come on in, please? They are one of the original Golden Girls, who was also on other shows like Boston Legal and Hot in Cleveland, I believe it was. And the only reason why I know you were on Boston Legal is because I just saw that last night, one of the episodes. <laughs> so last night or the night before. Anyway, so very funny. You're so funny. Um, I know you've had a rich career and so a lot of respect for your body of work. Today, I'd love for you to give us some inspiration. You lived a very full life. You experienced a lot of um, you have a lot of experience being a woman in Hollywood and a woman comedian at that. So it would be really great for you to share a few words with us about women and who we are in your words. And she says, I think you want, perhaps would want me to be funny, she says, which makes sense, I'm a comedian. I don't think it's a time to be funny. First of all, I would like to say that women have made great strides as far as equal opportunities. There have been tremendous gains. I don't want to um, overshadow that or make light of that, but there is a long way to go. And you can't stop. You cannot stop. Okay, so I'm asking her in my head, I'm having a little conversation here. I'm asking her about advocacy. Well, how do you, what do you mean? Like, we can't stop. Yeah, what, stop what? She said, believe in. <laughs> okay, we can't stop believing, like the journey reference. Hello, everyone. We can't stop believing. Women don't stop believing, according to Betty White. Seriously, she says, seriously, there are ups and downs. It's always like that. She says, it's always like that. Politics is unpredictable. And what comes and goes with that is just behaviors, she says. Behaviors of people who don't believe what you do are always visible. It's always obvious, she says. When people don't believe that you should be paid equally, just for example, she says people who believe that you don't, shouldn't be paid equally, you're not gonna change their mind just because you pass a law about it, she says. You can make conscious efforts to support initiatives, she says, incentives in your area, in your local community, with advocacy groups who will promote and support women's health. She says, women's reproductive health. That is Betty White, women's reproductive health. And she says, it doesn't matter what I think you should do. It matters what you need to do. And she says, it's so easy to sit back and, and, and um, that's my phone. She says to judge people. It's so easy to judge, isn't it? It's so easy to judge, she says. Look at the reality TV that you watch. She says, look at all of how, just television has changed over the years and how there's a whole culture 
that is built upon watching train wrecks in order to be able to criticize the train wreck. It's entertainment. Unfortunately, she says that gets mixed in with the society's values and beliefs, and it creates just this big mess. And where people don't have a sense of humor, you can't make light of anything because everything is a big deal and you're gonna rub somebody the wrong way. And she says, if you're a comedian, you have a thick skin anyway. She says, everyone should be required to do stand up. Everyone should be required to bring some joy into people's lives and to completely humiliate and criticize everyone. She's like, like an equal opportunity to criticize and humiliate everyone. She says, it's so ridiculous. It's so ridiculous when beliefs are imposed upon other people. And she says, whatever it might be, there's two things you should never talk about, politics and religion. So what are we gonna talk about? She says, politics and religion. You always make jokes about the Catholics or the Irish Catholics or, you make jokes about things that are wildly inappropriate and cultural appropriation, or she has used with cultural appropriation. She uses the word cultural things. Um, she's referring to diversity, I think, is what it looks like, like the civil rights and all that as well. Yes, she said it's all mixed in. It's all mixed in. You can literally talk about anything as a comedian and you'll get death threats, she says. That's what happens. And she says, however, that's a way to bring in to the conversation the absurdity of the varied viewpoints around any topic. Pick anything, she says, pick anything. And she literally, she's so blunt. She literally says, like blacks and whites, to bring that in, she says. And she says, my last name is white. I am quite the white person. And yet I had privilege, yes. And at the same perspective, and she says at the same um, rate in Hollywood, as a woman, you can forget about getting any sort of jobs that could be filled by a man, even at like a comedy club, she says. They never took us seriously as comedians. It never took us seriously. We were the butt of many jokes, she said, but she says people like, she's saying herself and like Joan Rivers capitalized on the novelty at first of being a woman in Hollywood that is funny, a funny woman. She says, um, and then she's showing me other people, I don't know who Rosie, is there a Rosie Greer, Rosie? I don't know who this is. There's some older, older people, older women, and she's showing me kind of slapstick stuff way back in like the speakeasy days and like the Groucho Marx vibes, but women, showing me women, funny women. And she's saying, if it weren't for them, it wouldn't have paved the way even for an opportunity for someone like me. And she's saying, um, so I'm using the word trailblazer with her. I'm going to say, you're a trailblazer. You set the stage for many women to have a voice and to be cast in roles that, and, and have storylines that represent women who are in different forms of life, who choose different things, who are in different stages of life, who aren't just the young, beautiful women, but who are also older in, in their lives. And in addition to that, um, the storylines for the things that you were involved in, taking something very, a very serious issue, like gun control, for example, and then creating the opportunity to have a, almost like such a stark contrast around it, around it using the kind of absurdity in your face humor that she's like, it kind of protects the issue in a way where it's a safe way to acknowledge, wow, oh my gosh, oh, that was funny, haha, <laughs> but it's not really funny. It's funny, but not funny is kind of how she's saying. So you can get real human issues using humor. And she says, it's a great way to, to bring things in to the, the conversation. She's like in the, into the community, into the, the context of society is to use humor. And she's like, it's, a, it's an incredible way to slowly start to chip away 
at old um, behavior patterns. And she said, it's not just the beliefs or the values of people, because you can't change that. She's like, you can't change somebody's mind, but you can change their behavior because you can force things to not be acceptable, which unfortunately, she's also showing us the flip side of that coin is things that once were gifted and granted as a right can also be taken away. And then she says, it's kind of like when your mother says, I gave you life, I can take it away. She says, we know that's not true, but the simple dramatic contrast to a woman that gives birth to a child and then the child is, grows into a teenager who then is all of a sudden not this cute little beautiful baby anymore and is a sassy mouth. And you can't just smack them because that's illegal. And she says, everything's illegal. And she's saying, but yet there, it's almost like, she says, it's almost like they need to fill the prison system with parents who are frustrated with their children and take dramatic action. Okay, all right. There's a lot here and she's saying, um, there's a lot to be said, she says, about spending your time where you're gonna give, get the most, um, spending your time, your effort, your money, where you're gonna get the most value. And then she's saying, um, supporting, as simple as supporting companies that don't support dissolving your rights or that not like, um, it's weird because she's saying this the opposite way and I'm trying to capture and it's hard to capture it exactly with Betty White here. She's saying basically, so, so purchase from companies, organizations and support organizations, companies, products where the organization doesn't make a habit of supporting political elections in ways that are adverse to you or like don't support those and find other, other companies, even if they're big corporations to support. And she says, it might cost you a little more, but you're making a, an effort and you're putting your money where you, it's like you're taking an action is what she's saying. And to support then, not just the big companies that affect policy or get politicians in office, but you're supporting the opposite, which is companies who are more grassroots or more, um, more connected to their communities and then are more reflective of the community. So whether it's a diversity reflection of diversity and culture or whether it's a reflection of um, products or things that really support women. And she's like, I'm not just talking about marketing. She says, I'm talking about really do your research. And if you can get things that are, that are companies in your area that you know are um, allies of the values that you have and actually take action, like support, maybe they support the local pride parade, or maybe, you know, maybe they donate money to a women's shelter or um, things along those lines. Just like going to a church and giving money to a church that gives money to these causes, it's the same thing, but you have to be much more conscious and intentional about it. She's like, you have to be more, you have to make effort. It takes effort. You can't just blindly purchase something online. You have to know where, what that company's spending their extra money on. Who are they supporting when it comes to politics? And she said, I know that takes a lot of work to do that, but you have to do it. That's how you educate yourself. That's how you really make change, where you spend your money and where you spend your time. Time and money, those are the two big things that influence people, especially in America, because it's a capitalist society. She says, you take somebody's money away or waste their time, you just see how happy they are not. So. Okay. She says, I know it really stinks. I know this stinks. She says, I know this is just, Oh my gosh, Betty, I can't show them that. There's an imagery I see. I'm clairvoyant, so I see with my third eye. So when I'm channeling, I see imagery. That's what clairvoyance is. And she literally is showing me a very, what would be considered a very, um, I want to say inappropriate. Everything about Betty, you are super like, 
<laughs> not appropriate. If we're just hanging out talking and having margaritas or something. <laughs> it would be not that appropriate. So um, she's showing me a, a weapon, like a sawed-off shotgun. So shock value, maybe, for me, to make that connection between um, what we value as a country and what we don't. So when she says, yes, Bridget, women are, it is clear that there are some that would like to see women barefoot and pregnant at home in the kitchen and never leaving the house, she says, just to serve the men, right? Yes, she said there are people that, would, that do view women as second-class citizens in America, in the US. She says that's it's sad. She's like it's it's awful. It's bad. That's bad. But it's the truth. It's just the truth. And she says, um, for years we worked trying to just get a fraction of what the men are paid. She says you see it in sports now too. It's really it's pretty it's pretty pretty drastic. The pay and salary difference. She says pretty drastic. But but believe it or not, we've made great strides. And she says the time is not to quit. The time is not to just throw your hands up and walk away. And it's also, it's not, oh, okay. I don't like this reference because energetics, usually it's not like a war. I don't like the term and energy, you guys. I don't like to use the term war, like to fight against something because that creates this agitation and aggressive energy that is like a good and bad and only one can win kind of vibe. And that's hard to do with energetics because then you're amplifying that violent kind of negative tendency. But she literally is reflecting to a battle. And she says, it is a private battle for many to come to a place where they understand what their own belief systems are, as opposed to how they were raised, like what their parents told them, what their church told them, what their doctors told them, who, whoever it is, uh, their college professor told them. She says, we have so many, um, this is Betty Way, we have so many views of ourselves through other people's eyes. It's really important to take the time to know what your viewpoint is and what you believe for you. And she says, that's what choice is all about, what you believe for you. She says, this is what you can focus on. This is what you can do. Choose what's best for you and be loud about it. And she says, you don't have to fight and get angry. You can come together in unity and show your alliance for women as a people, as leaders, as not just advocates for change, but the example and the embodiment of what that means. She says, you create life. Women make people. And she's like, it's true, we need men to do that. And sooner or later, when the, when the people in power figure out that you need men to also create babies for women, There'll be some interesting conversations about what to do to the man in regards to pregnancy. Hmm. And like, I literally see a list of like child support and healthcare access, and long-term until the age of 21, helping with education. I see all of these things. She's just making a list. Here's all the things. It's not just punishment by pregnancy. She said that, not me. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I am so going to be strung up for this, Betty. And she's like, Bridget, it's your platform. Use it. That's the point of all this. Use your goddamn voice. Okay. I will. She says, you're gonna to have to have a thick skin and a shield, but you don't have to fight anybody. As long as you know who you are, do you? You, whoever are watching this right now, do you know who you are? Do you know what is true for you? 
Do you want me to tell you what's true for you and expect you to change your belief system and just support what I believe instead of your own? Would you like that? Would you like for me to tell you? I'm not going to. I'm not going to tell you what you should do. I'm not going to tell you what you should eat for dinner. I'm not going to do that. I can barely pick my own dinner. <laughs> right? Oh, Betty, I got lots of opinions about this. I'll have to do a video on my fairy grasshopper YouTube channel about it. I think Betty is, um, she's matter of fact. She's very confident and there's a lot of courage here. So you as a woman who are watching this, regardless of where you fall on the issue of abortion, whether you are in the camp of pro-life for yourself or pro-choice for all, you have a right to your opinion and your view. And I'm not gonna tell you what you need to do and what you shouldn't do. I'm not gonna tell you what's bad or what the one right way is for you because I'm not God. I'm not the creator, the power, the source. I'm not, I'm not gonna tell you And I'm not going to let you tell me. Is that good, bet? Is that good, bet? Hmm? Hmm? Is that good? Is that good enough? And we can still be friends. As long as you don't come over and like try to dress me a certain way or Tell me that I shouldn't wear these earrings. Like, as long as you don't come into my house and take away these earrings, I don't really like these earrings. They're jade. Or tell me that I, I can't wear this ring from Disney World because it's kind of offensive to you and it bothers you that it's on my body. Yeah, I don't want that. That's a little creepy, kind of creeping into my home and kind of, Wow, trying to live my life, you know, that's kind of weird, right? It's a little weird, isn't it? Yeah, it's a little weird trying to live somebody else's lives for them. It would be nice if we did have kind of a template for the perfect people and how best to live life. But the fact that we're humans, my friends, kind of avoids everybody of that. Nobody is perfect because we're people and we have a mind that's an ego mind that thinks we know better than anybody else, which helps us in making our own discernment and decisions, but doesn't give us that right to make others. Yeah, I know. It's complicated, right? We can still be friends. Totally fine with that. He thanks Betty, trailblazer for women. I love it. It's awesome. Because that's what I do in my private coaching work as an intuitive life coach, inspiring your spirit and filling you with hope. That's the point. Because it's your life after all, and you get to live it. I'm not gonna tell you what you can't do with your body. Do not tell me. I mean, you could tell me. I'm not gonna listen. Because only I know what's best for me. That's what confidence is. That's what courage is. That's what self-love means. This is Bridget with the Bubble Life channel. Thank you so much for listening to this particular watching, this particular video here with Betty White in the afterlife. This was actually recorded in June of 2022, June 26th to be exact, two days after the Supreme Court shared their ruling on the overturning of Roe versus Wade. 
that was the inspiration to record this video with Ms. Betty White. Thanks for being here.